Guys. Guys. I'm so happy. I did technically start this game on stream, but then my stream, like, kind of crashed, so I'm putting it on YouTube. Which is great! Because I could take my time with it more! And I'm so excited! God, I love Deadly Premonition. Le Carré! Oh, yeah! Because it's, like, um, the author, right? Named after the author? Uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. That does not seem like a fun time. I was wondering about this. Are they like sawing it to pieces to prevent contamination? But, like, the saw could still have contamination, right? Instead of God just, like, thawing it. it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. I would like pizza. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? <laughs> Maybe. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. And no red, remember? Don't put your gun at him. It's open. Come on in. York! Oh, pff, alarm. But York! Those books look pretty. This looks like a good apartment. Needs some cleaning up. Of course, a bunch of DVDs. What would York be without all of his movies? Oh my. You have questions for us. Oh, I'm sorry. Zach. That's why you're here, isn't it? Those are some red eyes, bro. <laughs> oh, Zach. Hello. I didn't really get to know you before. Okay, yeah, you really, uh... Okay, I don't really have freedom of movement. This would be a nice apartment, but really needs cleaned up. It also kind of reminds me a little bit of the layout of, um, the D4 apartment. Oh my god, the revamped original theme. I'm already obsessed. I'm gonna be fan... 
fanning out, geeking out so much. Owl water! Books? Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please keep that in mind as you speak. I should be eating a sinner sandwich right now. Do we have permission to film this? Aaliyah, hello. Hmm? <laughs> Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis. And this is Simon Jones, an analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. Hello. <sighs> Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch ah! a break. Wow. Well, like the uncanny okay. duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. I agree. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but. Don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. Okay. If he's hiding something, oh, oh. it'll come out in his face. Oh, this is kind of a D4 style. This smell. It doesn't surprise me at this point, but it'll be problematic in court if they decide his testimony is unreliable. I won't get another chance to talk to him face to face like this. I need to get him to stop smoking that for a bit. Francis Zack Morgan. He was once an FBI special agent. An extremely talented one. At least that's what they tell me. He was the best! Perhaps he was a little too talented. Ah. Uh. Letters of appreciation from the governor and the Department of Justice. They're caked in dust as if he doesn't even care about them. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? Like, why is a woman wearing pants? What are you talking about? Also, what was moved a on the thick table? A black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And... Your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Heck yeah. Hashtag go Aaliyah. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? <gasps> little gray cells, oh my god, that's an Hercule Poirot Agatha Christie reference! 
Okay, okay. I'm Aaliyah, sorry. That's, that's enough. Her. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Okay, you could toe down the sexism. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. Yes, call him out. <laughs> so, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. Stage four progressive malignant tumor. Oh no. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? And what if that human is also a high functioning sociopath? No, my York. That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste. But the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No. But it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chess nut myself. When I was in school, I used to pore over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. I love that. Well, Unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. Wait, I'm sorry, I just clocked the box in the back. Review, recycle, reuse? Isn't it reduce, reuse, recycle? Oh, maybe that's like a copyrighted uh, slogan. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. Ah. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess. All alone. Hello! I like that desk. So... What's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? It's fun, I've done that. You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Ah ha ha, that is true. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Oh no, everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Oh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. Ooh, you can use visions to inquire important hints. Oh, okay. Interesting. These files are from the case that took place just outside of New Orleans in 2005. The agent who handled the case was Francis Zack Morgan. And now he's sitting right in front of me. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We... solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. We stole the right to investigate from them. Just as you said. I mean, that's what Paul always does. If he happens to be aware of a murder, he's like, cool, well, now I'm here. 
It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? Lucare? Maybe that's how they say it down there. We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. <laughs> I know what he means, but that's a funny line. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? Are you suspecting my boy? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Bell. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? Ooh. <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Bell. I was wondering what that shuffly sound was. They found Lee Clarkson's body. Ooh. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Services cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? Case is back open. That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved. Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? The body that went missing for 14 years was suddenly discovered frozen in a warehouse. This is some kind of message from the victim to us. We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. I mean, can't the case technically be closed even if, like, a body was never recovered? Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. That's impressive. Well, good for you. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. Uh, weird comment to make. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. I mean, I feel like the fact that she is literally chopped up into multiple pieces would be like the first giveaway that she was a murder victim. <laughs> she looks more like a piece of art or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? I really want to dust this place. Also, what's missing from the table? <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. That sounds like the first game. Sounds just like our story. Yup. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. Okay. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to before coming to us? Such as... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness. Aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. Which means that I didn't get to either. No. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. 
Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> a mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries, and they always have the most bizarre timing. Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Trenton, New Jersey. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. You're not supposed to ask. You can't see her. Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative identity disorder. In the past, it was known as multiple personality disorder. Oh, I like that you've updated the terminology. Good. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it, and no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together, is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting... Right there, on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey! Stop it! No violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? Yeah, don't be mean to, I assume, Emily. You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. The moment Lise Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We questioned all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staffed the warehouse and its owner, but we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Hmm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse. That man. So... incoherent. Such a pain. <laughs> hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in... 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You... Oh, 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 sorry. That was a misclick. I didn't mean to skip. Mm, the large man, yes? No need to answer, if you don't want to. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. <sighs> Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. Yes, and it's driving me insane. I want to clean it so badly. Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. They're practically begging me to question them. DVDs are all over the place. I know that he's a shut-in, but this still seems like way too many for one person. You have not met him. <laughs> 
I would love to know what all of these DVDs are. Ooh, I think I see the circle, which, oh no. <coughs> Reminds me of the movie Circle on Netflix. <sighs> That's a really good, it's a really good movie. And I've never heard of any of these titles before. Oh, girl, he he can give you all kinds of recommendations. Yes, yes, please. Okay, what is this the spot? This a total mess. But certain spots look perfectly clean. Is it just a coincidence? No, something was moved recently. Mm. No. There are no coincidences with this man. What is the triangle? Stage four progressed. How did what effect? Mr. Morgan. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... sanctuaries. Oh, there's one on top of the fireplace, too. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The souls still there. Souls are triangle shaped. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon, don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. What were you doing Ooh. all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time, and what does he have to show for it? Oh my so, god, Zach is so, so sassy. Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on, I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. <laughs> Agent Jones. Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taking control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones, did you find the files? I want his bag. That looks real cute. Actually, it looks kind of like a bag I own. It's really cute. Green Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? I do. Whoa! You touched the sanctuary. Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction we told of you. justice. We told you. Go. Ah! Say back. Say back. Sanctuary. Die. Say back. Ah! Okay, why well, those DVDs is definitely ninja police. Mr. Morgan? You have red. I cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Not after what Please, he's been through. Accept my deepest apologies. I... I'm sorry too, Morgan. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. And no more red, either. <laughs> Don't ever 
touch one. Again. I, I told them. Now, may we return to our discussion? My poor boy! Oh, don't worry. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. Actually, I don't think that that's as rare as they're saying. I want to say a phobia of a particular color, like, is a thing. Oh, yeah, uh, I have no mouth in my I'm a scream had that. There was a character afraid of the color yellow. I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. Here's another empty space. What does the word sanctuary really mean to him? Hovels for pure souls? Soon after Agent Jones started monitoring him, he was ordered to go through Morgan's trash, but he didn't find anything. Morgan used this machine to cut up everything, from his mail to his supermarket receipts. Then he even went as far as taking out his trash in parts. Smart man. Mr. Morgan, I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't want to remember that town. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumatized? What do you think, girl? Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. What? What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Lucare case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. Ooh. Looks like another old antique. He collects milk cartons, but treats valuable antiques like trash. What's going on in his head? A jar of honey with honeycomb inside it. There's nothing strange about it, but... Uh, I'm a so picture bad. of a leaf. This isn't just a picture of any leaf. The belief in truth begins with the doubt of all truths in which one has previously believed. It's time to get down to business. To defeat the Huns. Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. Look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. It's a pretty tree. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red. Red tree. Red tree. Yes. A red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the Lee Clarkson murder case. They're connected by these red trees. <gasps> Cases. Aren't they? Red trees. Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. 
You're good. Damn good. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. <sighs> Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes, it was that red tree. That red tree ruined my life. It was... It was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south, like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. Yes? The other me. <laughs> my better half. Your York, 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 York. Ah Never a choice when somebody needs you. Wee. You can't turn away. You're their only lifeline. Just a hero, a bullet for hire, working alone. Always a voice, a cry in the darkness, an echo of pain that's been long oh forgotten, my. but it haunts me, my destiny to be alone. Time when you see life for what it's gotta be. Oh god. <laughs> you I don't need the booty. They'll destroy you. But call to me to keep searching. Walk alone. Zach? Hi. Ah, uh, yes. There you are, Zach. He <laughs> <laughs> sleeping again? No, maybe. <laughs> Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. I like these leaves. They're very pretty. They also kind of remind me of the Isn't crimson. Isn't that right, Zach? They remind me of the crimson butterflies in Fail Frame 2. Wee. Dead to Y premonition. A blessing in disguise. Oh, I love the music already. Hello. Wait, a full-on lobster? 
and like omelet and whatnot. Zach, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Hello. Thank you so much. York! Baby face York. Look at that, Zach. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Oop, that's not Hurry nice. up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Lacare, sounds like French to me. But what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. <laughs> I like you, sir. Hello. Did you hear that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zach. Zach? Uh, please don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. If you say so, still. <laughs> Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice, if you ask me. Do you use one of your axes that is placed right there? <laughs> Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. But shoot, I ain't the one you ought to be asking, Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. Ooh, ooh, okay. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seal. They own most of the land around here. From the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town and they still support it. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best dear clear that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. Ooh. They folks with real power. They're the killers. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Oh, they are absolutely the killers. Especially the head of the family. P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. Okay, either he's the killer, or if he's really old, he trained the current killer. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. I'll keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. 
We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss jaw. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. Yeah, I don't know of any cops who sit you down and talk it out. I feel like it's uh, more the second. That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. The sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this. Live and let die, Angel Heart, and the Pelican Brief, right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me, they lack realism. <laughs> Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat people. Ah! That's my point. Cat people. Oh my god. 1982, directed by Paul Schrader. I think he talked about this in the first game, the crowning too. crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski. The yes. ultimate oh, movie yes. of the 80s. He absolutely did. Oh. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 realism. Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Yep, David with you. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. D did you invite Malcolm on this trip? Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Period. You need to remember this because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. I have endured so many conversations like that and the entire time I'm just like, I'm ready to leave. So, uh, <laughs> what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister, why do you look so excited, huh? My bad. Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. Oh, that's bad. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh, well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge... It was some kind of altar. Wait, but didn't they just find her body 14 years later? So, like, does her body get stolen? An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah, wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar like. I guess someone does take So she was her, sacrificed. Her body does disappear. That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zach. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket. Your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. I like that the food is still steaming. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. It's also a, so much food. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really. <laughs> but I'll listen if you want me to. Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then... I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But 
Now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana, so I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. And who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of The Last Starfighter, 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself. Especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had... So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it. And in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Do you even know how to Remarkable, skateboard? Don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. By the 10 mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent <laughs> talent sleeping inside me. What the this heck? This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Oh, screw that. Watch out, mm -hmm. you don't go get in heat stroke. The least Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zach? Zach, the searing light. Mmm, <laughs> these scents. It's the deep south. Mmm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. You didn't even eat it. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Yeah. Well, the tea was to die for, but I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? My morning. I'll eat some of that food. That omelet? That omelet looks, looks good. I think my roommate has cheese. Oh, I have peppers. I need to use my peppers. Yeah, full control. Oh my god. Oh my god, I love these PJs. I want these PJs. I really, really want to get like some nice silk jammies. Oh my god, for breakfast? Sausages, fried chicken, pizza? I'm here for it. Is that dessert? I love it. Hello, you fabulous man. Ooh, I like this camera work. 203. Uh, what was the number? What was our room number in the first game? I don't remember. Vending machine. Look at his jog. It's so good. I have, I have money. Okay. 
Concentration. Yeah, I just in case. Yeah. I assume that those will be good items to have. Sorry, what is this in our room? Amazing. You see that, Zach? I am fabulous. Son Rouge. We've been chasing it all over America. But I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zach? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but... It's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stain's from Miami. Ah, uh, Miami. Now, that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Oh, hot. Even with the help of the drugs, a feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. The same floor his blood gushed out onto. I I cannot express into words how happy hearing this music I know, Zach, makes me. I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. Oh. Oh my god, and this song. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And Lee Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered, her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. The powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare, and he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. Evidence organized. <laughs> Such a Virgo moment. Casa Pineapple. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zach. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line, a genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? Oh, man, that makes me want to watch that movie. I don't think I ever saw it. No. You can't make me. <gasps> yes! I love that. I am deeply concerned by this. I've been to New Orleans, but I've not been, you know, that's my only experience of Louisiana. I don't know if that's like a regular thing to see. Oh, maybe I don't wanna shave, I'm not sure. Due to the nature of our work, we've had to stay at hotels all over America. But Zach, do you know what I hate most about living out of a hotel? Shower pressure. The shower oh, was invented yeah. so that human yeah, beings yeah, yeah. could quickly bathe in large quantities of water, correct? Yet there are far too many hotels in our nation that have showers with embarrassingly weak water pressure. I agree. It's an outrage. 
and I'll keep tooting my horn about this every chance I get, believe you me. I... I hate low shower pressure. It's so annoying. I'm very satisfied with the decorations and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? It's proof that we're still safely inside the fringes of modern civilization. I love it. Ooh. As good as new. Oh my god. I, I am so excited to collect some, uh, some suits. Okay, a lot of rubber bullets. <gasps> yes, the lollipop make its return. Oh, a sleeping bag. Oh, that's awesome. Alleviate paralysis. Oh god, antidote. Cold be Am I You can get sick in this game? What? What? Hello. I hey there, love chef. your What's cooking? bow tie. Chef. What are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. Okay. I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. Yes, I've gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? The author! Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes! Yes, I would. Don't tease me. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah. And? That's it. That's it? Yes, that's it, sir. Do take a gander at the town map in the lobby if it fancies you. It's beautiful, valuable, and old. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. I mean... I, you're not wrong. <laughs> Did you see that, Zack? That was clearly David. Not a twin. Not a split personality. Just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say. The job makes the man. I did it. I totally would have thought, though, because, like, the famous author, I totally thought they would have gone a literary reference. I do appreciate all the inclusion of art. It's cool. That is a big you mirror. That, Zach? Dozens of paintings no one will ever see. A faint scent of tobacco baked into I these walls see for them. over a century. I was literally just now commenting. that's what I call a hotel. Zach, can you see him? His oh. fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. Perhaps we should talk to him. Are are we going to talk to a painting? I mean, I love the look. I nice am here for this. Did you buy it here? 
It's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> oh god. Also, I love this like, little be percussive fool. beat going you know on in the, the background. Answer. As for me, just call me Hunga. Hunga. A title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? Oh god. Oh god. Do you comprehend the oracle? The oracle? Your religion hat, Zach. Here we go. Put on your religion hat. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent, and you will glimpse the other world. Ten maidens and an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Zach, did you hear all that? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. But such is our duty. We need to accept the chaos, let it inside, then carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth and present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. <laughs> I will take a silver bracelet, but just one and not handcuffs, please. Thank you. Okay. So, any phone. God, I love seeing this, or hearing this music. It's just, ugh. Zach, here's another perfect symbol of the human condition. Hunting trophies. Is it? I hate those kinds of things. And it's a buffalo hunting trophy. Now that's a surprise. I've seen several trophies made out of human skin, but ah! never a buffalo's. Okay. Looking okay, Yor. brings out this strange feeling from within me. Yes, the very same feeling I got when watching a certain film from 1984, directed by Peter Hyams, 2010. The last scene in that film filled me with such a sublime, majestic feeling. It was filled with everything that was missing from the finale of 2001, A Space Odyssey. Ooh, interesting, because I freaking hate 2001. Just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. Let's watch it once we get home. Promise, Zack. I will say 2001 Space Odyssey is very visually gorgeous. So many shots that are like so good. Um, I like the idea for the script. Um, I'm not into the finale. Like I get it, it just went a bit too... I don't know, I guess I wanted something a bit different? I don't know, it just didn't leave me quite satisfied. Like, I, I totally get them going the route that they did. I'm not saying that the route that they did was, like, bad. I just... It'll fill you up well. Okay. Um... I don't know. It was, it was very artsy. It felt artsy for the sake of artsy. Um, which is fine. Uh, but Jesus Christ, the pace. I literally ended up watching that movie essentially on fast forward because I was like, I get it. It's a really pretty shot, but like, you, you need to move on. I don't have 
10 now, minutes to watch Lucari. a dude walk down a hallway. I think I'm finally starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care, and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Map! Yay, map! Zach, what Ooh. did you think of Hoongun's Oracle? Despite all the dramatic build-up, it's little more than a childish riddle. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. Now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The Oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Okay. Now, very funny, oh. Zach. Now, it's time to get serious. You already know the answer, don't you? Now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The Oracle gave us Alexis's diner and lane. This is it, Zach. There are even pins and a bowling ball on the sign. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Mm. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it. Okay, so I have to, like, bowl a strike. And... Oh, in the Shrine of Hunger. Now okay, yeah. Aura. So I guess it's just bowl strike. There's no flying serpent on this map. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? Ooh. I'm sure we'll find out later. First... Let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is usually treated as a base number, but under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? The answer is temperature, Zach. Yes. Oh. Zero degrees Fahrenheit, the Clarkson Food Delivery Services Cold Storage Warehouse. Yep. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily Flying keep serpent. the temperature below Dragonfly? freezing. Flying serpent, dragonfly? Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? Yep. I'm brilliant. I got ten dollars for that. Heck yeah. And how about that Hoongan? What a mysterious character. His oracles may end up determining how much time we spend in this town. A lot. I would like to 100% this game. I still haven't 100%ed the first one on this. I need to. It's so Sorry, dramatic. boss, but this is a smoke-free hotel. If you're dying of smoke, head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. Don't tell me. You're the At bellboy. At your service, boss. I love him. Are you good friends with the concierge and the chef? Eh, we work at the same place, yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I love it. I believe we've struck gold here, Zach. It just screams deep south. Actually, no, it doesn't. This is all his charm. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Why do I love you? I'll play by your rules. You're amazing. Okay, David. I am here for you. I should not bother you right now. I'm gonna go try to bowl a strike. Ooh, we're gonna see how well this works. Probably not very well. Though it's in a video game, so maybe better than I would in real life. Because, lord knows, I am not a good bowler. But I also, I bowl for fun. I just, I remember the last time I went bowling, I, uh, oh god, it was a, like a double date. And I do sports things just for fun like i i mean it's the same way with video games like i just do things for fun i do not try to be good i do not care about being good like for me it's just a good time 
And uh, he did not like that. This guy that I was there with, he was trying to get me to like try and be good. And I was like, bro, I, I just don't care. Stop trying to make me care. <laughs> like, let me just have fun. Smokers have a 4.7 times greater chance of getting lung disease. You're right, little kid. Hi. I like your braid. You know that means it's more likely than getting asbestos poisoning? You've got that right, nerd. The risk of death from lung cancer is actually much lower than what you think it is. Uh... In fact, it's tiny when compared to heart disease, strokes, and pneumonia. Uh, We're always fair. surrounded by easy ways to die, you know. Some people even get randomly struck by lightning and die right there on the spot. Then I reckon you also know that secondhand smokers have 1.3 times greater the risk compared to smokers? Of course. So you won't mind paying the damages when I die of lung disease? How about writing that in a contract for me? You got a pen, right? <laughs> I love this kid. I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Well, that's stupid. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Um, is something wrong with you? Adults ain't supposed to act like that. I only asked for your name so I can write it on the contract. You should have been able to figure that out if you're a real FBI agent like you said. Come on, sign here. Right here on the paper. Just as I thought, Zack. This contract paper, it's a San Rouge wrapper. San Rouge is here, too. This must mean that San Rouge is connected to the Lee's Clarkson murder case somehow. This is a sprawling case that spread across the entire South. It's within our jurisdiction, Zack. We'll need to steal the right to investigate from the local authorities at once. By the way, miss, what's your name? Patricia Woods. But I gotta write my name myself, or else it won't be a real signature. <laughs> this little woman is like, Tell me, business! Patricia, does this town have a sheriff, or is it under the jurisdiction of the nearest city police? Perfect timing. Well, go on and steal it if you want it. I was just thinking about how this is way out of my daddy's league. Thank you for the information, Patricia. Okay, Zach, it's time to get to work. How should we seize control from the sheriff this time? Ooh, okay. Run, crouch, dodge, move camera, melee, red. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. All right. So run. Oh no. Oh, that's that thing. Um, red room. Okay. Okay, this is like the first game. Um, I'm not understanding dodge though. I mean, I, I guess I can talk to you. I want to go bowling. Hey there. So, uh, you're the fella from the FBI I've been hearing so much about. How does I'll everyone know about me? They call me the sheriff around here. What up? Oh, I wonder if the letters that are read, if you, like, take all the characters' names, if they spell something. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan? But call me York if you can. That's what everyone calls me. Huh? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Mr. York, how's that sound? Fine by me. <laughs> I'm sure you figured this out, but our town's a small one. Yeah, 
folks are already busy spreading gossip about how some FBI agents come to town. <laughs> now, uh, I reckon you came from the city. What was it? D.C., L.A., or New York? Anywho, in the city, it's normal not to know who your neighbor is. Fellow who moves in next to you could cook up a dozen folks in his backyard, and no one would bat an eye. That's the city for you. Now, I never lived in one myself, but I visited him a few times, so... Then how would you know? know? Like... No, you don't! All pigs must die in the city of wolves. Yeah! Now, does that sound badass or what? I bet you'd... Hey! I know, I know, CLG. I'm just trying to make a little small talk, that's all. Anywho, round these parts, everyone knows each other's name. So lots of folks get leery when they see an étranger like you. And since it's my duty to protect the town, I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Zack, it looks like this sheriff is quite the happy-go-lucky type. A clear indication of just how peaceful this town is. I like him. Melvin, about the Lee's Clarkson case. I knew you were here for that case. Can't put one past the FBI. Mm. So they even got eyes on the smallest of towns like us, huh? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Are you like miming? Filled with driving a car? And it's all within their grasp. I love you. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I love how this child is just like, I'm surrounded by weirdos. The Lise Clarkson case is connected to a top secret case that we've- I know, I know. If you're fixing to take the lead, <laughs> then go right ahead. I'm just the humble sheriff of a tiny little town. My jobs are to stop my neighbors from beating the piss out of each other and listen to old folks complain. Honestly, this whole murder case has been weighing me down. So I'm gonna give you my full cooperation. Mr. Special Agent, sir? That was easy. Well, Zach, that was anticlimactic. No, I'm here get for to it. to use my secret weapon. What is your secret Melvin, weapon? there's a cold storage warehouse on the southern end of town, isn't there? I'd like to get permission to enter it. Say what? You want to see where the body's being kept, right? Oh, I get it now. Lisa's body, yeah, yeah. Now, uh... That's what I call a special agent. You already figured that much out. Mm. He is geeking so hard, and I am here for but, it. Uh, hmm. I'm not too sure that uh, going down there at this point is really going to help much, you know? Explain it yourself, Daddy. That's incredible. I don't believe this. Amazing. Did you hear that, Zack? They put the body in a cold storage warehouse. This is fantastic. Insanely fantastic. R really? Well, uh, how about that? <laughs> well, all right then. I'll head on down to the warehouse ahead of you and make sure we get permission to search it. Sounds good. The management company only keeps the warehouse open during certain hours. So you'll have to come during those hours. I ain't looking to create any further disturbances. So be on time. Got it? Come on, let's roll, CLG. I'm gonna walk home, Daddy. I still got another stop to make. Oh, if you say so, sweetie. Stay safe, kid. <laughs> She's a real sharp one, as you can see. So I try to stay out of her way. Well, all right then, York. I'll see you at the warehouse. I love it. But first I must bowl! Shout out and thank you to all my patrons and Twitch subs. New merch is available. Use the links down below to grab yourself some swag. And more is in the works. Thank you all for watching. Bye!